Natural language search is increasingly becoming a necessary feature to include somewhere inside your applications. Even if just for making your admin tooling easier to use, it's something you are going to want to know how to do. But searching with natural language sounds really hard to build, right? Well, maybe it's not as hard as you think. First though, we're going to have a quick history lesson. Natural language search had always been a really hard problem for developers to solve, until around 1999 when a guy named Doug Cutting builds this Java library called Lucene. Doug Cutting, by the way, would later go on to write the distributed data processing library Hadoop, so yeah, he's a pretty big boss. Anyway, the idea of Lucene was that instead of trying to search directly against your database, you would essentially copy all your data into another data store, which would index the data in a very specific way that let it be query lightning fast when you searched it with natural language. I'm talking like one or two milliseconds to return search queries across large data sets. It does this by using a data structure called an inverted index, which you don't actually need to worry about right now, but you should definitely read up on it in your spare time. Now, Lucene became immensely popular, but it was still pretty low level and challenging for a lot of developers to use. So in 2004, there was a library built on top of Lucene named Solar. Now, Solar exposed HTTP endpoints into Lucene indexes, so you could have a code base written in any language and still leverage the power of Lucene over HTTP. It also gives you some nice tooling for working with and managing your Lucene indexes at a higher level. But this was still in the pre-GitHub era, and like all libraries built back then, it's a little wonky and enterprisey to use. So fast forward now to 2010, a guy named Shay Bannon creates this library called Elasticsearch, which like a solar is a custom database built on top of Lucene, but it added a bunch of additional functionality that solar didn't have. It also scaled better and was much friendlier to developers. So with Elasticsearch, not only could you index JavaScript documents into Lucene and use a modern REST API to query them, but you have tons of additional functionality on how to customize how the documents are stored, how they're ranked, how you're searching for them, etc. And this project gets tremendous traction. But it's still a little cumbersome for you developers to use because you have to host and scale it yourself. You have to do manual DevOps on it, and you have to learn a pretty decent amount about the internal workings of the database in order to configure it properly. So could we do even better? Well, in 2012, a startup called Algolia builds a SaaS product which is essentially a hosted version of Elasticsearch. So it gives you a REST endpoint, and all you have to do is send your data to this endpoint, and it will index it for you on their own backend so that you can search it in natural language immediately with a simple JavaScript library. It also deals with all the scalability issues for you and gives you an awesome UI for configuring and managing your indexes. Real talk right now, this is one of the single best SaaS products that I have ever used. You can seriously build robust natural language search into apps in a matter of minutes. And I am going to show you how to do it on an Always Be Coding screencast. So I have a list of every NBA player that played minutes last season, their position, and the amount of points they scored. I want to be able to search through this list with natural language and have it return results even if I only give it partial search data and even if I make spelling errors. Now when we're talking about indexing data into Algolia, we're talking about specific serializers against our model objects. So this is a Rails backend right here, and I have a model object called NBA player. The NBA player has the following attributes, display name, position, team display name, and points. And all that I'm gonna to need to do is loop through all of the players in my database, serialize them into JSON, 
and send that over HTTP to Algolia, and Algolia will index the data. So I'm on algolia.com. I'm already logged into my account, but if you don't have an account, you can just click this button to get started on their free tier. So I'm going to click Dashboard. Then I'm going to go to Apps. And I'm going to create a new application. I'm going to call the application Screencast. And you need to choose a plan. This is their free tier right here, which you can store 10,000 rows and query it 100,000 times for free, which is incredible. So I'm going to do that and hit Create. And then it's going to ask you to pick a region. I'm in San Francisco, so I'm just going to pick the one I'm closest to, which is US West. And we have a new Algolia app. So now we need to go to Indices. And you're going to need to create an index. An index roughly corresponds to a database table. So in theory, you would have one index per model object. And it should probably be named the same thing also. So I'm going to call this NBA Players and hit Create. So now we have an index created on Algolia. It doesn't have any data in it. Now we need to import our data from our database. So first we need to make a custom serializer that converts our record into the proper format to transact to Algolia. I'm just going to make a simple instance method called serialize Algolia, which returns a Ruby object of key value pairs of my attribute names and values. The only other thing I'm going to do is add an attribute called object ID, which is the object's ID. And this is a special key that Algolia expects as the ID. Now if we go to our console and reload, we can see if we call serialize Algolia, it'll serialize the record into this format, which we can turn into JSON and send to Algolia. Now the Algolia backend is just a REST API that works over HTTP. So we can use this with any programming language that we want. But if you are using Ruby, there is a nifty gem called Algolia Search that you should add to your gem file and bundle. Once you do that, there's an initializer that you'll need to add, algolia.init with an application ID and an API key. If we go back to our Algolia console and go to our API keys, we'll see that it has an application ID. So let me copy and paste that in. And then for the API key, there's a couple API keys listed on this page. The search only API key is what lives in your client side code, and that's for querying your data only. But if you want to have the API key for your backend for transacting data, you use the admin API key. So I can click on it here and copy it and paste it into my code. Now there's two ways to import data into Algolia. You can either transact each record individually, or you can group records together and make one request and transact them as a batch. Because we have something like 500 NBA players to import, I'm just going to do the one batch request. So first I'm going to make a class method called self.algolia import. And I'm going to store the name of our Algolia index as a class variable on the model. Algolia index name equals NBA players. And then I'm going to get a reference to the index by using the Algolia gem and doing Algolia index.new and then passing in the index name. And then once I have the index, I'm going to call the function add objects plural. That's for the batch import. And we'll do MBA player dot all dot map and serialize Algolia. So if we open our Rails console just to see what that does, I will do MBA player dot all dot map and serialize Algolia. That will just map through our records and it'll serialize each one in this exact format. And then we can import this one object as a batch if we just call MBA player dot Algolia import. So it looks like it sent a bunch of data. And if we go to our Algolia dashboard, it's empty right now. But if I refresh this index, you can see that our NBA players did get imported. And already, through their UI, I can just start to search this with natural language, and it'll automatically do some kind of filtering for me. So if I search for John Wall, it returns John Wall. And even if I misspelled his name, John Ball, it still returns a match. So this is already looking pretty promising. So importing our data was pretty simple. But now, whenever I transact a new record into our database, I want it to automatically sync to our Algolia database as well. Well, check out how easy that is to do. First, I'm just going to make an instance method called index to Algolia. I'm going to copy the first line from our import function just to get a reference to the Algolia index. And then I'm, instead of index.addObjects, I'm going to call index.saveObject, which is the method you call to save an individual record. And I'll do self.serializeAlgolia. Now all I need to do is add an after create hook here. 
to tell the record, once it's been created, just index yourself to Algolia as well. So if I go to our Algolia instance and I search for Michael Jordan, it's not gonna return any results because Michael Jordan isn't in our database. But let's go ahead and now create him. So let me reload and let me do player equals NBA player dot create. And I'll do display name, Michael Jordan. I'll do team display name, Chicago Bulls. I'll do the number of points as 3000 and the position as shooting guard. So we created our record, but also now if we go back to our Algolia instance and I search Michael Jordan, we'll see that he's there in our database because he automatically got indexed after create. Likewise, we can do the exact same thing for after destroy. So we'll do after destroy, remove from Algolia remove from Algolia, and then we can copy this guy down. We move from Algolia, we'll get a reference to the index, and instead of save object, we will delete the object, and all we need to pass is not the serialized object, but the ID. So if we save this, reload, player equals NBA player dot find 481, player dot destroy, we destroyed him from our SQL database, and now if we go to Algolia and search for Michael Jordan again, he's no longer there because he got automatically re removed. So this right here is a very simple setup to keep your Algolia database in sync with your actual database. Now for the client side. This is a very simple React.js app for demonstration purposes. If you're using Algolia client side, you're going to want to use the Algolia search JavaScript library. All you need to do is put in your package JSON and npm install. Now in your app.js, you can import Algolia from Algolia search and initialize a client by doing var Algolia client equals Algolia and passing in the application ID and search only API key. So if we go back to the Algolia key section, I can get my application ID right there. And then we need the search only API key because this can be publicly exposed since it can only search data, it can't actually write to the database. So we make a new Algolia client, and then all that this is saying is whenever I change the value of that input field, call the this.search function, and the this.search function will set the state, but then I want it also to Algolia client dot init index dot uh, init index called NBA players. And then we're gonna search that index. We're gonna pass in the event target value, which is the value of the input box, and then have a callback function with error data. And let's just console.log the data so we can see what it looks like. So if I go back here, I open up my console and I search John Wall. We'll notice every time we change the input box, we're getting another search result back from Algolia. And it's lightning fast to give us those search results. And the object that's returned has a property called hits, which is an array, and this is an array of search results. So we could see on that very first search, all that we had was the J, so it returned things like Jay Crowder and Jamal Crawford. But as we got towards the end, the search query was John Wall, there was only one hit which was John Wall, the record that we were actually interested in. So you can see very easily that we could just set um, the state variable of players equal to the data.hits, and this list would automatically filter because of React magic. So let's try that out. Instead of console.logging data, let's this.set state of players equal to data.hits. And I have the rendering logic pre-configured so that this should actually work, that as I type John Wall, you'll see that the list filters. And I can even spell something wrong, John Wall without the H. Oh, I guess that didn't work. But if I did John Ball, maybe that actually did return. Now, the reason why John Wall didn't match when we just typed J-O-N actually has to do with the way our Algolia index is configured. Without going into too much detail and overwhelming you, the basic way that Lucene works is that when you give it a natural language query, it will test that query against every single record in your index and assign a score to each record based on how well it matches. Now, it'll then return the top n results that have the highest score. But that algorithm that it uses to calculate the score, well, that's up to you as a developer to decide. And trust me, you can configure every little fucking detail of that thing if you want to.
Algolia kind of simplifies it for you and gives you this ranking tab where it gives you a nice little dashboard about the different parameters that go into the algorithm and lets you easily configure them. One of the default settings on Algolia is the minimum characters to accept one typo as valid. Turns out that it's four. When we typed J-O-N, that was only three with a typo, so it didn't match. Luckily, Algolia makes it so easy to change. Let's just say three, hit save, and we don't even need to refresh our client side code once this is done indexing. I can literally just delete this and then do John Wall and now it matches. So that's how easy it is to change the ranking algorithm that you're using. So something else that's really important is the idea of fastening your data into different categories. For example, if you're amazon.com and you type in a natural language search, you might want your results automatically grouped into books, movies, electronics, something like that. Or in my case, I might want my player results to be grouped by position when they return. This is the idea of faceting your data, and Algolia lets you do that by going on to display and setting an attribute for faceting. So I can just click an attribute and do position, and now by default, I'm able to pass in a parameter to my query that lets the results be grouped by position. I'll show you how that works. So back here where I make the query call, I can pass an optional hash of search parameters, and trust me, there's a lot of these, but I'll just do facets position. And then I will console.log that data that comes back and delete this. And if I search for John Wall, I can see as the hits were coming back that I had this object of facets by position. And I could see how many from each category came back or even configure it so the search results are directly there. So here's one other thing to note. I have a new model now called Tweet. And I just downloaded all of my tweets off of Twitter as a CSV file. And I wanna send, the, I wanna import them to Algolia so I can search against them in natural language. Well, I have more than a thousand tweets and Algolia only lets you import data in batches of a thousand max. So if you wanna import something with more than a thousand records, you might need to do something like this, where I do self.all.each slice, where I make batches of a thousand and then import the thousand item batches. So that's a pattern you're gonna use a lot. So I want to do a natural language search against all of my historical tweets, but since we're dealing with a little bit more text per tweet right now, it would be nice that as I'm matching a term, I could actually see it get highlighted so I knew which term in the text was matching. Well, it turns out this is really hard to code yourself. I know because I tried it once and failed miserably. But by default, when you get search results back from Algolia and Elasticsearch in general, if you look in your hits object, you'll get this underscore highlight result object along with the, the data that you get back. And if I go to text, I can see that it's giving me a value with these emphasis tags, and you can customize these to be any HTML tags around the actual match term, which is really, really cool. So if I actually wanted this to work, let me uncomment this line that I have here. We'll refresh this, it'll load all my tweets from my database. And now as I'm typing, you could see that I'm actually getting the highlights of what search term match. So if I wanted to see every time I talked about Ethereum, I can see the match search result in all my things. So if I want to type my own name, I can see that matching. If I type Xcode, I can see that matching. So that's really, really cool functionality that would be really hard to build yourself. So even with all that stuff I just showed you, trust me, I am only scratching the surface of the world of natural language search. There's so much more to it and I encourage you to learn about it. But Algolia is just such an incredible product and it makes this so simple that I had to make a screencast about it, I couldn't resist. So anyway, if you like this kind of content, and if you like learning about the real world of software development, sub this channel. Why have you not subscribed to my channel yet? I don't understand. Also, follow me on Twitter, at alwaysbecoding. I've got a list of 100 topics just like this to cover. And guess what? In the next couple of weeks, I am going to start powering through them and throw more content your way. Get ready for it. Peace.